Don't mean it, Sophie cried. How awful. It is screaming just like you would be screaming if someone was twisting your arm right off. Is that really true? Sophie asked. You think I is Swiss figgling you? It is rather hard to believe. Then I is stopping right here, said the BFG sharply. I is not wishing to be called a bibster. Oh no, I'm not calling you anything, Sophie cried. I believe you, I do really. Please go on. The BFG gave her a long, hard stare. Sophie looked right back at him. Her face opened to his, I believe you, she said softly. She had offended, she had offended him. She could see that I wouldn't ever be fibbling to you, he said. I know you wouldn't, Sophie said, but I, but you must understand that it isn't easy to believe such amazing things straight away. I understand that, the BFG said, so do please forgive me and go on, Sophie, she said. He waited a while longer, and then he said, it is the same with trees as it is with flowers. If I is chopping an axe into the trunk of a big tree, I is hearing a terrible sound coming from inside the inside the heart, heart of the tree. What sort of sound? Sophie asked. A soft moaning sound, the BFG said. It is like the sound an old man is making when he is dying slowly. He paused. The cave was very silent. Chris is leaving and growing just like you and me, he said. They is life. So it's plants. He was what he was sitting very straight in his chair now, his hands clay clasped tightly together in front of him. His face was bright, his eyes were round and bright as two stars. Such wonderful and terrible sounds I is hearing. He said some of them you would never wish to be. Wish to be hearing yourself, but some is like glorious music. He seemed almost to be transfigured by the excitement of his thoughts. His face was beautiful in its blaze of emotions. Tell me some more about them, Sophie said quietly. You just ought to be hearing a little Missy's talking, he said. Little Missy's is always talking to each other, and I is hearing them as loud as uh, my own voice. What do you? What did? What did they say? Sophie asked. Only the Missy's know that he said spiders is also talking a great deal. You might not be thinking it, but spiders is not the most tremendous matter boxes. And when they is spinning their webs, they is singing all the time. They is singing sweeter than a night nightingale. Who else do you hear? Sophie asked. One of the biggest chat bags is the cattle piddlers. Piddlers, the BFG said. What do they say? They is arguing. Arguing all the time about who is going to be the prettiest butterfly. That is all they is ever talking about. Is there a dream floating around in here now? Sophie asked. The BFG moved his great ears this way and that, listening intently. He shocked his head. There is no dream. There is no dream in here. He said, except in the bottles, I has a special place to go for catching dreams. They's not often coming to giant country. How do you catch them? The same way you is catching butterflies, the BFG answered with a net. He stood up and crossed over to a 
corner of the cave where, where a pole was leaning against the wall. The pole was about 30 feet long and there was a net on the, the end of it. Here is the dream catcher, he said, grasping the, hole, the pole in one hand. Every morning I is going out and snatching new dreams to put in my bottles. Suddenly he seemed to lose interest in the conversation. I is getting hungry, he said. It is time for eats.